Hi, in this video, I'm going to reveal 10 ways that you can make money with a side hustle starting right now. Before we get into it, if this is your first time to the channel, then please take a moment to subscribe. Um, and also, chances are you haven't seen any of my content yet, as this is the very first video that I'm putting out to my channel, uh, Ditch the Grind. So welcome, my name is Brad Schomkel, um, obviously Ditch the Grind. Um, yeah, so hit the notification bell so you can be notified of any new videos that we pump out. And um, with that, let's get into it. So 10 side hustles that you can start right away. Uh, I'm just gonna go through a list of them um, in this video, and then I'm gonna link to each one that I discuss, and then you can get your, like, then you can get an idea of what it is that we're looking at, and I'll link to those in the description below this video. Uh, so affiliate marketing is the first one. <clears throat> affiliate marketing has been around for a while now, and it's one of those things that just it, it just doesn't really go away. And it's 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 a fantastic way for especially people that are looking to increase their income in, in an alternative sort of way, um, because it's easy to get it, it can be quite easy to get started. So there's none of the there's none of the process of having to create your own product or your own services or anything like that. Basically, all affiliate marketing is is just promoting someone's product. Generally, when it comes to it, someone else's product, it's with a person who's already been well established in the industry. Um, so they already have a, like a following and they already have a bunch of people that know, like and trust them. So it's just your job as an affiliate marketer is to take their product and get it in front of as many eyes as you can. There's a number of ways that you can do that. You could be doing paid ads, which is something that I, I do for a lot of my offers. Um, or you can be doing it with like just talking to people, um, just your network, basically, uh, sharing it on social media. Um, you can be doing like, you know, recommending, recommending someone's products um, because you might have ex like experience with that particular product. Um, you might have a good following, that kind of thing. So it kind of makes sense, you know, if you're gonna be doing something that you enjoy, then you might as well share products that you find or services that you find that you could recommend to other people because it helps everybody involved. Um, so yeah, not a new, not a new thing. Uh, it's been around for a while, and it's probably a good way for a lot of people that are that are looking to generate an income by an alternative means, not just online, but um, just just an alternative means. Um, in the wake of, or in the midst of the pandemic, um, people, a lot of people are looking to generate an income because there's a lot of people out there that have suddenly lost jobs or they've had their hours cut, that kind of thing. And um, a lot of the world is switching to this, like to alternative methods with which to generate an income. And you, like, you have to do it. If you don't adapt, you, you die. That's, the, that's pretty much the, the law of nature. Um, we're not gonna go too much more into that, but uh, the next one is trading options, um, specifically trading stock options. So, um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. And this is something that I've looked at uh, like a, a little while ago. I started researching the whole um, thing behind it and it's, it's it's really intricate. I find it really interesting and, and fascinating at the same time. Um, again, this is another video that I'll create in the future and I'll link to that in the description at some point. Um, so basically trading options, it's like everyone's familiar with the like the whole idea of buying stocks, um, you know, shares in a company sort of thing, and you buy low and you want to sell high, because you buy it low, and then the difference between where you buy it low and then you sell it high is your profit. Um, of course, the flip side of that is you buy it and then it decreases in value, and then you do what most people do and they panic and herd mentality, they sell when it's low. Um, how trading options differs is you can use it's like a basically you it's like a contract between two parties so you either buying or selling the option to buy or sell at a predetermined at an agreed price before on or before a predetermined time which we call expiration um 
so if, if someone if someone buys a stock and they want to get what is what we call like you know a um, they want to get an option then they're gonna they're doing that to protect themselves against taking too high a loss but you as an option seller might decide that you believe that this stock is worth a certain amount and you're happy to buy that stock off this person at, an, at the, the agreed price so when they purchase the option off you they have the right but not the obligation to sell you the option at that agreed a price on or before the expiration and that's how they that's one way that people can hedge their losses um, and that's also some way that you can as an option seller you can make money by selling insurance that if they decide that they don't want to stick with the stock anymore that they can hedge their losses by selling the stock to you at that price so you might buy it at a dollar fifty um, you might say that I want to sell it at a dollar if it gets to that point if it drops below the dollar and you decide now nah, it's, it's 50 cents now I don't want to have it anymore I'm gonna sell it because you and I agreed that you will buy it at a dollar so now if they exercise that option you now own the stock at a dollar but then the reason you might do that is because you believe that that stock is going to go back up in the future so they sell the stock they get what they want because they're happy and then you sit on, you, you can now sit on your stock you now bought this stock for 50 cents less than it was before um, and the same works again when you buy an option but obviously in reverse um, so we're gonna I am a little bit rusty on that method um, it's but it, it's, it's a really really cool little way to do it um, <clears throat> which brings us to the third thing MLM or multi-level marketing MLM 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 this is one of those things you it's almost like a word that you can only sort of say around certain people um, I've had experience with other multi-level marketing platforms in the past or network marketing or whatever you want to call it um, the way that most people sort of view it is like it's something where somebody will come around to your house or they'll invite you over for a barbecue and you go over there and you think yes we're gonna have a barbecue and a few beers that kind of thing um, and catch up with friends and then you get there and then you have some food you have some drinks and then they start buttering you up and the next thing you know you're in the middle of a presentation and you're going I, I don't know <laughs> um, you didn't tell me about this but now you're trying to tell me that this is a good way that we can make some money somehow um, so it's moved on a little bit from there but MLM has been around for a while in various forms it's now taken an online approach or has done a while ago um, and it's still got that really sketchy stigma attached to it and it's, it's probably never going to shake that um, so, and I've, I've had my experiences with MLMs in the past and I've, the ones that I've tried, basically they're, they're almost like fly-by-nighters because if you don't know what an MLM is, basically it's a, it's a business that, that distributes products but they don't have uh, paid sales reps or, or necessarily staff that work for the company. So anybody, like the, the, main, the main way that they bring revenue into their business is through either what you might be familiar with the idea of an auto ship. So basically each month you have to buy a certain amount of their product. And then the more people that you bring into your network increases the amount of revenue that they continue to bring in every month. The problem with that it sounds good because recurring revenue is fantastic. Just us Bill Gates with all of his substandard Microsoft products that he had whenever it was. Now he's into viruses. The thing about it is if it comes down to MLM and they are pushing for you to have a product that is it's, it's basically it's solely reliant on you bringing more and more people in so that they can auto ship these products. And like, I mean, you have a, you sit back and you think about it. There are things that you need to buy, but consistently every single month, 
women, excuse me for saying that, but like some women, like, you know, the majority of women, there are things like that that happen cyclically. But I mean, otherwise, like not, not really. Um, which is where it starts to fall apart because if you are in the middle of trying to figure out, of, 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 you know, thinking about going into MLM, if you do, the first thing that you should be doing is looking not at the MLM or comp plan, which is basically how everybody's paid that gets placed under the ones above in this pyramid scheme that they swear is not a pyramid scheme. Um, you need to look at it from like, you know, like as, as an actual business. You need to know that where they are getting their revenue from has a good solid foundation because the whole reason that some of these, like the, they've had to go with auto ships and products is because without that, they are in fact a Ponzi scheme. And Ponzi, Ponzi schemes we know are illegal. So if you do decide to do it, the first place that you should go is to have a look at their product or service that they are, are selling. And if the, if the company can stand on its own two feet solely based on the product or service that it sells, then, it is most likely, more likely than not, a viable business. But if they can't do that, and people are trying to, this is my personal view on it, if people are trying to push you into this based on the comp plan, then you need to ask yourself, why are they doing that? And that's a red flag for me, so that's why I stay away from that. MLMs in general, there was a point in time where I was just like, no, no MLMs, because prior to that, there was a point in time where I was like, MLMs, fantastic you speak to a guy on the phone uh, we're going to jump on a three-way call my friend who's introduced me to some dude some woman she's going to make us a heap of money but we have to jump into this thing and we have to keep buying a whole bunch of shit that i don't really want or use or even like for that matter overpriced and i, I could go on about this all day but again mlm this is another topic that i'm going to go into based on what I mentioned before, where it has to be, it, it has to have a good solid product or service and the business is able to stand on its own two feet without the comp plan. So the comp plan should be something to just complement and complement only. Uh, freelancing. So freelancing is, you're basically like a, a contractor. So um, where this has gone to like an online sort of space lately is people that have like web design um, skills or marketing skills, Facebook ad skills, YouTube ads, that kind of thing, um, SEO, search engine optimization, that kind of thing. Um, and there are some sites out there. So if you like, like such as Upwork, or there's another one I think Freelancer, Upwork I'm familiar with, um, because I promote my services on there as a freelancer and also as a client. Uh, so sometimes I hire from there and I've had some fantastic talent hired through Upwork um, when I've been looking for freelancers to help me with my various projects. Um, so if you have a skill, and you might have one that's digital, it might not be. Um, if you are able to sell that, especially like if it's outside of business hours, so like you might, so like for me, for example, I have a scaffolding business um, that takes up a lot of my time during the day and even after hours. Um, I also have a startup digital marketing agency, um, which was formed about 12 months ago when things started to go pear-shaped with COVID and everything, um, I was un under the impression that even here in Australia, we were going to take a bit of a hit and I had to hedge my, you know, I, I, to sort of protect myself and my family against the possibility of running out of work. Incidentally, it turns out we got really, really busy for some reason. Um, I'm thankful for that. But it also meant that my new startup marketing agency meant that I couldn't grow it as quick as I had hoped. Um, so anyway, I'm getting distracted. Back to freelancing. Um, so these like these platforms like Upwork, you can go there and you can set up a profile, uh, just like a, a social media site, and you can advertise your skills and you can apply for jobs, um, just like Seek here in Australia or. Uh, it's been so long but since I like Jora or something and there's like a couple other job seeker ones that are around there um, same kind of thing but then this is this is great because why it's why it's why it is a good side hustle is it because it can be something that 
you don't necessarily have to be doing full time. It's something that you can use and do after hours because it's, it, it attracts people from all over the world. So you're not limited by hours in the day um, or, you know, you know like you, you can sort of increase your reach because you've got uh, people in the UK. So like now, well, what's the time? It's like six, almost 6.30 at night. So there's people in the UK, it's, it's like in the morning for them. Um, so they're just starting their day. So you could spend the evening if you've got spare time. And trust me when I say this, everyone does have some spare time. Um, if you're serious about learning how, how to like create a side hustle, you need to make the time and you need to be serious about it. Um, so you could be doing these things after hours, you could present the work for them so that they can go and implement it, whatever it is that they need to do during their day. And then they can get back to you at the end of the day, their day, and then they can tell you if, you know, whatever, if they need anything else or if everything's all good and they want to go ahead and they want to pay you and tip you if you're good, if you've done a great job because, you know, that, that's why you, you want to do this because you are good, you have some time, you have something that needs to be shared. Um, so yeah, freelancing again, we might get into that in another video down the track.